Hi everyone. Through this class, we are going to study about mutual exclusion principle, Raman activity of vibration, and molecular structure determination from Raman and infrared spectroscopy. First, we discuss mutual exclusion principle. If there is a molecule with the center of symmetry, then Raman active vibrations are infrared inactive and Raman inactive vibrations are infrared active. This principle is known as mutual exclusion principle. And if there is no center of symmetry for the molecule, then some vibrations may be both Raman and infrared active. And in symmetric molecule, if in a particular vibration, if there is no change in dipole moment, then it will be infrared inactive. And for a particular vibration, if there is a change in polarizability, then that mode will be Raman active. Converse of this rule is also true. That means if there is no common line in infrared and Raman spectra, then we can say that there is no center of symmetry for such molecule. But while stating this, caution should be necessary because two weak Raman lines may be possible. As an example, we can consider modes of vibrations of carbon dioxide. For carbon dioxide molecule, there are three modes of vibrations. They are nu1, the symmetric stretching mode, nu2, bending mode, and nu3, asymmetric stretching mode. For nu1, there is change in polarizability, so it is Raman active, but it is infrared inactive. And in nu2 and nu3, they are infrared active, but they are Raman inactive. So we can say that first mode, it is Raman active, while second and third one only infrared active. So we can conclude that carbon dioxide possess center of symmetry according to mutual exclusion principle. Our next topic is Raman activity of vibration. If a molecule has little or no symmetry, then vibrational modes can be either Raman active or Raman inactive. But for a molecule, if there is considerable symmetry, we need a detailed consideration. We have to consider whether or not polarizability changes in that mode of vibration. For explaining this, we can consider a polarizability ellipsoid of the molecule. For drawing polarizability ellipsoid for a particular molecule, here we calculate the polarizability in various directions starting from the electrical center of the molecule. Suppose in a ninth direction, the polarizability of the molecule is AI, then we calculate 1 by square root of AI. So for different I direction, starting from the electrical center of the molecule, we calculate this 1 by root of AI. Then such points, they are connected together. Then we get one ellipsoid. That ellipsoid, we call it as polarizability ellipsoid. And when the polarizability is greatest along a particular axis, then in that ellipsoid, it will be least. If there is maximum length in a particular ellipsoid indicate that along that direction polarizability will be minimum. Consider a simple asymmetric top molecule H2O. First we consider the symmetric stretching mode. So during compression and stretching of the molecule, we can see that there is a change in size for the polarizability ellipsoid. So we can say that there is a change in polarizability 
So such mode of vibration is Raman active. Now the second mode of vibration is bending mode. During this bending, we can see that there is a change in shape for the polarizability ellipsoid. So here also there is a change in polarizability. So this mode is also Raman active. For the third mode of vibration, there is no shape change or no size change. That mode of vibration is asymmetric stretching mode. So here the stretching is asymmetric. But here we can see that there is a change in direction of the major axis. So here also there is a change in polarizability. So this mode is also Raman active. So for H2O molecule, all the three modes of vibrations, they are Raman active. Now we consider carbon dioxide molecule. For a carbon dioxide molecule, there are three fundamental modes of vibration. They are nu1, the symmetric stretching mode, nu2, the bending mode, and nu3, asymmetric stretching mode. First consider symmetric stretching mode. During the compression and stretching, there is a change in size for this polarizability ellipsoid. And if we plot alpha versus normal coordinate x, the displacement, then we get to the graph like this. So from this graph, it is clear that though alpha by dou x near the equilibrium, it is non-zero. So it is Raman active. Now we consider the bending mode. Here during the bending, we can see that there is a change in shape for this polarizability ellipsoid. But if we plot the graph of alpha versus x, then near the equilibrium position, here there is no dou alpha by dou x or dou alpha by dou x equal to 0. So this vibration here, we can see that near the equilibrium position, there is no change for this polarizability ellipsoid. So this mode of vibration that is Raman inactive. And the third mode here during asymmetric stretching, here we can see that there is a change in size. But near the equilibrium position, there is no change in polarizability or change in polarizability is negligibly small. So this mode is also Raman inactive. So if at x equal to 0, in polarizability curve, if we have a larger slope, then the Raman line will be strong. And if in polarizability curve, the slope is small, then Raman line will be weak. If there is no slope, then there will not be any Raman line. So we can conclude that symmetric vibrations, there will be intense Raman line. And non-symmetric vibration, usually weak and sometimes unobservable. Our next topic is structure determination from Raman and infrared spectroscopy. For the structure determination, we take CO2, N2O, SO2, NO3- minus, ClO3- minus, and ClF3 as example. First, we consider AB2 type molecules. So for any molecule, first we want to find whether that molecule is linear or not. If the molecule is linear, then we want to find out whether it is symmetric or asymmetric. So first we take CO2 and N2O molecules. We take the Raman spectrum and infrared spectrum. Then we can see that there will be IR bands with the PR contour. If for a particular molecule, we get IR bands with PR contour, then that molecule is linear. So, this CO2 and N2O molecules, they are linear. Applying mutual exclusion principle in CO2, we can see that it possesses center of symmetry. But in the case of N2O, 
we can see bands common in infrared and raman so we can conclude that n2o is asymmetric for getting the structure of sulfur dioxide we take infrared spectrum and raman spectrum of sulfur dioxide and we can see that corresponding to wave number 519 in raman spectrum there is a line and that line is polarized and in infrared spectrum also we can see one line corresponding to this wave number and that line is parallel type band corresponding to 1151 we can see another raman line that line is also polarized and in infrared spectrum we can see one line that line is again parallel type band corresponding to wave number 1361 we get depolarized raman line and in infrared spectrum we can see a perpendicular type band so all the three modes new 1 new 2 new 3 they are both raman and infrared inactive so this so2 possess no center of symmetry then these ir bands they are complicated rotational fine structure so this molecule is not linear so we can say that this molecule is non linear and there are two polarized raman lines so from this we can conclude that it is of bend shape so the structure is like this next we consider ab3 type molecules we know that in a molecule with n number of atoms there will be 3n minus 6 fundamental modes of vibration so in ab3 type molecule there are four atoms so we expect 3 into 4 minus 6 that is six fundamental modes of vibration but in a molecule if there is any symmetry number of fundamental modes will decrease by number of degeneracy in symmetric planar and symmetric pyramidal structure there will be one stretching mode and one angle deformation mode they are doubly degenerate so in symmetric planar and symmetric pyramidal structure number of fundamental modes will be 6 minus this 2 so only four fundamental modes of vibration or four fundamental frequencies will be there for symmetric planar and symmetric pyramidal structure for symmetric planar type molecule the movement of atoms in four different fundamental modes of vibration are shown here and that of the pyramidal is shown here and for this planar the first fundamental mode of vibration we can call it as new one for this new one we can see that that is raman active and infrared inactive for new two it is raman inactive and infrared active and for new three and new four both are raman active and infrared active but for this pyramidal we can see that all the four modes of vibration they are raman active and infrared active so planar ab3 type molecule one vibration will be raman active only one another vibration that is infrared active only and two other vibrations they are both raman and infrared active for pyramidal ab3 type molecule all the four vibrations are raman and infrared active if the molecule is non symmetric then there will be more than four fundamental frequencies now we take the raman spectra and infrared spectra of nitrate ion and chlorate ion in this nitrate ion corresponding to 690 we get a raman line at 680 we get one infrared line the 690 and 680 they are close to each other so we can consider it as a single frequency and at 830 we get one infrared line but there is no raman line and at 1049 we get one raman line and there is no infrared line corresponding to 1355 we get one raman line and at 1350 we get one infrared line these two are 
very close to each other so we can consider it as single one so this is uh, our new one line here raman line absent and infrared present so this we can consider as a new two and this as new three and this as a new four so this is similar to that of planar ab3 type molecule so we can conclude that our nitrate ion is symmetric planar structure now we consider this chlorate ion for this chlorate ion all the four fundamental frequencies they are raman active and infrared active so the structure is symmetric pyramidal for this chlorate ion now we take our last molecule chlorine trifluoride and for this when we take the ir spectrum and raman spectrum we can see six strong fundamental ir frequencies and some of these frequencies are raman active so the structure of chlorine trifluoride is neither symmetric planar nor symmetric pyramidal and the complete analysis it is not possible only using raman and infrared spectra alone by taking microwave spectrum of this molecule we can see that it is t shaped with a bond angle that is equal to 90 degree 